טוב, בואו נעשה מה אני מתחיל. Just check everything's working all right. Yeah, I think we're live. So if you are, if you're watching and if you can see the, the reference photo and the panel and the palette, and if you can hear me, hello, Mary Lynn, nice to see you. Please drop me a little message. Looks like lots of people can. Brilliant. Hi, Michelle. Just started painting and I popped up. Here I am. Synchronicity, there you go. Um, <clears throat> so I am, um, this week I've got a, a plan for streams and I'm going to do, well, we'll see how we go, you know, because you never know what's going to happen, but I'm planning to do one a day, about an hour long. Hello, Pat, good to see you. Hello, Preeti. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get your message and I will get back to you. Just had a bit of a busy day. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to paint these roses, right, that you can see at the, at the top right of the screen. I'm going to do them over the, the course of this week, but I'm not going to do this like just go in there and paint. Because I, uh, about, I guess it finished about a month ago, I painted a work, uh, I taught a workshop on Alla Prima flower painting. And it struck me very forcibly, especially when we came to the final subject. I'll show you, actually, I've got a little, it's an unfinished um, sketch of the final subject. Let's, let's look at some paintings to start off with, actually. This is going to be quite useful. So this is, um, this was like the beginning of an Alla Prima painting that we did in the final session. And it's, similar to this one which i did a little while ago which is of some wild pansies which grow around here primroses sorry and the big thing about painting stuff like this is that you don't try to paint that well you can if you want to <laughs> but it, it, it's much easier and you will have a much better time of it if you rather than trying to paint every individual flower from the right off, if you paint all of this as a shape and like an all of this as a shape and that as a separate shape, you know, and then you put the modulations and the lights and the shadows and stuff like that in there. So I put up a little video on YouTube last week. This was done the same way. So there is absolutely no detail in this painting at all. It was painted that way. Okay. So I'm going to, um, and I thought it would be good to do one live to take you through. And um, to take you through how I approach this stuff, because I've also, I've got a workshop coming up pretty soon on this. So if this, if what you see over the next week makes sense to you and you want to go deeper with it and you think it's something that's going to be useful to you, you absolutely can. So. I'm just going to get started. So today, my entire goal is just to draw out the composition, but I'm going to approach it slightly differently than you might expect. Because I think when we look at stuff like this, I mean, it's, the, the roses are incredibly beautiful. And they pull your eye instantly. And, you know, you could count the roses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roses, eight roses. And generally speaking, you would tend to steam in there and paint eight roses. But what I'm going to try and show you is a slightly different approach, which is going to, I hope, kind of trick your mind into seeing light and shadow shapes instead of things. Okay, so I'm going to try and do an accurate drawing, which is why I've gridded this up. This panel, by the way, is, um, how big is this? 12 inches wide by 16 high. Enough room for the brushes to breathe a bit. Hello, Susan, good to see you. We're all painting at the moment. Judy, good to see you. And David's here too. <laughs> mm. Hello, Bondine, nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. 
Bora from Israel. Hello, good to see you. And Nisa's here as well. Brilliant to see you all. If it goes out of focus, you can... Hello, Diane. If it goes out of focus, you can try and refresh the page. Usually it's internet connection. Or sometimes, if you're watching on YouTube especially, you can go down to the bottom right and the little gear icon and you can um, set it to higher quality because I stream at 1080p, which is like, you know, reasonable quality, let's say. So <clears throat> I'm going to steam straight in with this, okay? So I'm going to start, like I would normally begin finding the furthest left, the furthest right, the highest and the lowest points. So the furthest left point of the roses is over here. And the furthest right point is away over almost to the side of the panel over there. The highest point is this funny little petal which sticks up over here. That there? No. Why is that wrong? Oh, because I put that in the wrong place. That should actually be there. Next line up. Would be most frustrating if I... Am I right here? Let me double check this one. Yeah, I'm confusing myself about where things are in the panel. I think it's because I'm zoomed in. I've got, it, oh, oh, I've got this image open in Photoshop and I'm zoomed in a little bit. So the highest point is actually about here. If, there was, if I divided that in half as well, it would be about there. So I'm trying to make, the reason I've gridded this out carefully is because I want to make a pretty accurate outline drawing, but an outline drawing of shapes and not an outline drawing of each separate rows. Okay, so if I squint right down, I've got light shapes over here and I've got two light shapes for the roses of the right, but all of this is kind of shadow. You know, so I want to start thinking about it in those terms immediately. Um, so the top of the vase is going to be coming about there. I don't want to, all I'm going to do is mark out where the vase comes. I don't want to start painting it yet. Because um, the bottom of the vase is going to come about there. Because I don't want to paint things. Suzanne says, your email said you weren't going to draw. No, my email said I'm not going to draw things. I'm going to draw patterns of light and shadow. You may have interpreted, interpreted that to mean that I was going to immediately put down light and shadow shapes, but I'm not. I'm going to outline the light and the shadow shapes. Let me stop gassing and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's say out of these, I'm looking at the, at the there's three roses over to the left-hand side, okay? Um, if I look at those as, as pretty much mostly as one light shape, I want to draw these three roses out as one light shape as, as much as I possibly can, okay? So I'm going to use the grid to help me. So it's going to go down there. This one comes up. So I don't want to draw the shadow. This is the tricky bit, right? Because if I was just drawing the thing, I would draw right to the outside of it, but I don't want to draw the shadow. So if you look at this top rose here, um, <clears throat> top of that rose is probably about here. I want to be fairly careful because I'm going to draw a little bit more carefully than I normally would. I'm going to actually put in not a lot of detail, but some idea of the detail of the outline. Um, so if I was going to draw this rose as a thing, I would go around here, right? Because that's where the shadow part of the rose is, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to paint the light shape. And the light shape comes down like this. And then comes across. And down towards this rose, which I'm also going to paint just as a light shape. Okay which comes around something like this. So I'm squinted like right down. I'm looking at a photo, you know, and you probably all know that one of the, the, the things you kind of want to watch out for with photos is 
it's just copying the photo. So what I'm doing is I'm squinting down exactly the same way as I would if this was actually um, a real life subject. So that I take out all of the detail and I'm squinting down so far that all I can see is shapes. No detail at all. And I'm deciding whether something is light or shadow. So for instance, if I was going to draw this rose, actually it's probably going to make more sense to, to finish this rose around until it meets the light shape of this one here, which is going to come down like this. If I can get straight into a light shape here. So this is my light shape. This whole shape is my light shape. So it's not two separate roses. That's what I mean by painting light and shadow and not painting shapes. Hello, Romy. Nice to see you. Casey's here too. Good to see you, Casey. And hello, Christine. Lots of people coming today. Okay, so that's kind of thrown in fairly quickly. I'm going to add a little bit more detail to that in a minute because I want to complete this painting, you know. Um, by the end of the week. Famous last words. Am I painting this in the right place? I'm still not sure I painted it in the right place, you know. Have I done it in the right place? I'm going to have to check, because this is quite a big panel for me. I'm not used to working this. I mean, it's, it's not that big, really. But I'm not used to working that big. I think it's right. I think it's all in the right place. I guess I should have numbered the grid lines or something. When I did um, the main painting that I'm working on at the moment, some of you will have seen from the streams that I was doing before, the pear with the stoneware pot. That one's almost finished now, that painting. And uh, that one, I did it from life, so I didn't grid anything out. I just, I just went in and painted. I think it's good to be able to do both, you know. There's, I don't think for a moment there's anything wrong with, with using grids and drawing from photo, painting from photos, but it's a good idea to be able to eyeball shape if you need to. You'll just be, you'll just be better overall. Now I'm going to decide to cut this shadow back this way here. Because this there, that is the bottom of the rose, but that's a shadow shape, so it's a separate shape, so I'm not going to paint that in. And then it comes up. This is like, this is all shadow shape here. So it's not a, a, as simple as it sounds to, to do things this way. If it was easy, everyone would do it right. Because you have to make decisions as you go along about a particular area of the subject and what, what, what shape it belongs to, a shadow shape or a light shape. And a lot of them are somewhere in between. So it's not always easy to decide, you know. But you have to choose. And the reason this is so useful is because it stops you obsessing over details, the bits that don't matter in a painting. And it helps you to see in terms of value and shape and colour, which is basically what painting is. So this is a light shape. I'm not thinking about petals and I'm not thinking about is that a flower or what is it? I'm literally just squinting down, connecting these two, that one and that shape, that shape and that shape is a shadow shape. Now I know that's another rose behind them, but I'm trying not to think about it in those terms. Hi Lydia. Hello Jeannie, nice to see you. I'm trying to think about this just in terms of light and shadow shapes. Or you could think about it in, in overall colour shapes as well, but I'm thinking about mostly just in terms of composition. So there is another, there's this funny kind of petal which is sticking up here at the top. So what I'm concerned with is painting this shape accurately 
There are two things that I, I notice that people seem to struggle with the most. Um, and I, I believe that looking at things, I was thinking about this when I was teaching the Still Life workshop and, I was, and it struck me that looking at things in terms of light and shadow and shape, that's how I draw out and that's how I paint. Even when it looks like I'm painting the things, you need to have that kind of two-dimensional view, especially at the beginning. Um, and the two things that it really helps with are getting the values right and getting the shapes right. And if you can get the values right and the shapes right, you're most of the way home. And I think the biggest reason, the main reason that people struggle with that is because they paint things. And I'll tell you an interesting thing. Um, do I have a version of it handy that I can show you? Now, I've got so many paintings around half finished things here and there. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> this is a version of that one from the last workshop further on, right? So I want to show you this because I think there's something quite interesting about this. So a lot of people, when this is a teapot, a lot of people, when they came to paint this part of the teapot, they carefully painted the shape of a spout. And because they were focused on painting what they knew the shape of a spout was, for a lot of people, they ended up getting what can happen a lot. And it's very easy for this to happen. This is no criticism of everybody. The values were out. In fact, you don't need to paint the shape of a spout here. You just need a couple of dabs of paint of the right value. And because your eye sees all this, your brain sees all this and knows what shape that is, it will make up the rest for you. But the problem is the value will go out and the shape will go out because your brain is overriding your visual perception with something that it knows, something that it expects to be there. Digital Judy from Florida, hello. And hello Ruby, from London, cool. Lisa says, could you explain how this is different from wiping out light shapes to begin? It's conceptually, it's not that different. So there's another way that you can do things like with a, I'll see if I've got one here actually to show you. I usually have a couple hanging around. If I can find one quickly, I'll show you a wipe out the start. Somewhere in my, one of these days I've got to go through all of my old paintings and basically chuck them out. So this is a good example of a painting that was started with a wipeout. And that's just the start. You know, so this is basically the same kind of thing. You can see, like, there's, there's probably a more detail than is really required in there. Here's another one that was started as a wipeout. That is a good way to start a painting because it helps you to think just in terms of shape and light and shadow. But it also, even when you're doing a wipeout like that, it tends to, you tend to focus a little bit too much on things. <laughs> and so this is a shadow shape that I'm painting in now. It's two roses, okay. But what I'm trying to paint is simply a shadow shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be something like right. So ordinarily what you would do is you would paint this rose and then you, you would paint, draw out that one and then you draw out the one behind. I'm going to paint them all as a single block and try to see it just as... That's too low. Oh, that's the top of the vase, isn't it? Just as one single shadow shape. I'm trying very hard not to think about petals. I'm trying very hard not to think about the shape that this describes. That's two roses in shadow. I know that's a shadow shape. So this is light. That's shadow. Hi, Christine. And, oh, I've got a... <clears throat> TL... 
Pestle, have I pronounced your name right? From Cairo. That's really cool. Very glad to see you here. Now this is a light shape. And the thing is, if you can stop your mind thinking about things, <clears throat> if I thought about this as a rose and I got hung up on making this rose, drawing this rose, I'm going to draw the rose. This is where people start to make mistakes because <clears throat> you're... I'm not sure exactly from a psychological point of view what the process is, but at some point your brain starts to override what you see and it starts telling you that you need to make something that looks like a flower and your brain's version of a flower for this flower here is going to be something like this. So what you'll end up with is, is a kind of an uncomfortable halfway house between your child's version of a flower and what you actually see. We tend to straighten things up. You know, painting um, like figures in perspective is tricky with foreshortening precisely because we tend to straighten things up. We, we tend not to draw or paint exactly what we see. We tend to paint or draw a schematicized version of what we see. And if you look at like Egyptian paintings, wall paintings, when they do a figure, they'll do <clears throat> the face in profile because that's the, that's how you, you know, it's the easiest way to see a face is in profile, right? Down to the neck. But then the shoulders will be straight on to you because that's the easiest way to see the shoulders is if they're straight on, right? So the shoulders are straight on, okay? But then when they get to the, the legs, the legs are seen from the side, you know? <laughs> so that's all schematicized. I'm drawing all over my panel here. And that's great if that's what you want to do. I mean, nothing wrong with it. But it's not what we want to do as realist painters. So if we want to avoid that kind of schematicized version, then we need to think just in terms of light and shadow. So there is a shadow shape here, which I'm also going to paint in. But you see, if I was painting this, if I was trying to paint these as flowers, this would already look different. It would already look very different than what I've got here. And when I came to draw <coughs> out, I mean, I'm done basically now. This is a shadow shape here of that rose. When I, if I came to draw out, I mean, you look at something that's really complex, right? Like this collection of stems. Now, how frightening is that? We've got leaves coming down here to these stems. The water is probably, the water level is, the water level does make something of a difference. I'm going to mark where it is roughly anyway. It's about there. <clears throat> but what we've basically got is if I just draw this as a shape, it's one big dark triangle. So it comes down from this rose here. I'm going to ignore the bars. I'm going to ignore the water. You know, if you, I've been asked a few times to demonstrate painting water, <clears throat> things in water. And it kind of, it flummoxes me a little bit because, you know, I've given it some thought and I actually don't paint the water and I don't paint the bars. I paint the light and the shadow shapes. And really, you're better off ignoring the fact that you've got water in a jar if you want to do this in a vase, if you want to do this accurately. You're better off not thinking about it in those terms, seriously. Think about light and shadow shapes. So the stems I've done as a single shape. The leaves that come off the stems below the roses up here. I'm doing these all as a simple, a, sing, a single shape. Because if I squint down, they are just a single dark shape. So that's how I'm going to paint them. Now, like I say, it isn't always easy to decide where something goes. I've deliberately chosen this subject because we've got very dark leaves, dark background and light roses. So when I come to do these roses, when I, tomorrow, I think I'm gonna be on tomorrow doing some more of this. When I come to do these roses, I'm gonna do them just in two values to begin with, just in two colors, just as simple shapes, light and shadow. And I'm gonna fill in the whole panel like that. And I think even at that stage, if you squint down enough, you'll get an impression of light and shadow. So the water level is here, okay? So, you know, there's a strong temptation to draw the vase at this point. 
But this triangle actually comes down past the water level, this dark triangle, and then it spreads out over in this direction. So I'm just looking at where this dark shape matches up with my grid. You know, that's really all I'm interested in. Actually, the bottom of the vase is like, down there really so there are individual stems here but I'm not interested in the individual stems I just want a dark shape and when I come to paint that I'm going to paint that as a dark shape I will refine these shapes I mean the point of what I want to show you whilst I'm doing this is how you get from this very schematicized version to something which is more finished but if you, this is your foundation. So if you build a strong foundation like this, you have a much better chance of creating something that will work. So I'm ignoring the vase, you know. If I look over to the right-hand side of the vase, there is a dark shape. And it happens just about where the water hits and then it comes down like this. It's just a shape. It's not a thing. And this is a really good point. I don't know if you can see that on the reference photo, but <clears throat> it's a shadow shape within the water. Guaranteed you would miss that if you were painting just the vase. On the other side, and you often find this, it's slightly reversed. On the other side, it, there's a light shape. So I don't want to paint the vase. I want to paint this light shape though that comes down here. But it stops there. So I'm not going to paint all of this around here. And I'm going to show you, hopefully. So this is all, this is one light shape. That's a shadow shape. That's a light shape. I'm going to show you, hopefully, when all of these things get filled in, that this is basically how we go about thinking in terms of light and shadow. You get your shapes more accurate this way. <clears throat> and you have much more chance of getting your values more accurate. Now there is um, a, a cast shadow from the side of the shadow box which comes into the side of the vase here. So it starts about down here and it comes up there. Now this is a really good example right now. I'm always trying to persuade people on workshops. You can see the division here across here. There's a line between the cloth and the background. If you squint down, you cannot see that division. So don't paint it in, don't draw it in, but everybody always does. Not only do they put it in, they overemphasize it because they think, no, I have to show that difference, I have to show that. But that is your enemy. That way of thinking is your enemy if you're trying to create a strong visual impression. Trust me on this, I'm professional. <laughs> I, I know it's really hard to switch that, that way of, of thinking about things off. I mean, I call it a way of seeing. It's more correctly a way of thinking about what you're doing, you know. But it is, I mean, perception, is most, perception mostly happens in the brain. Your eye is just receiving equipment. It's your brain that sorts it all out. So what I'm doing now is the cast shadow, right? And it actually goes through the glass. One of the big problems when people paint glass is they try to paint the glass as a separate object. But in fact, mostly when you're painting glass, you're painting the stuff that you can see through the glass. So I could paint the bottom of the base of the glass there, but I'm not going to do that. Because the cast shadow is actually partly in the glass itself. So I'm just going to paint the cast shadow. Where the cast shadow comes in, it comes up like this as a shape, right? It's a shadow shape. So hopefully you can already see that this is kind of rather different than you would normally be drawing something out, okay? I'm nearly done, basically. I think I'm gonna put in a suggestion of a shadow shape inside this rose, because there is a shadow shape there. I'm going to try and keep things that are in the light in the light. I 
and this one over here needs dividing into light and shadow. But I want to think, you know, it's like a, a single shadow shape that comes around here. Oh. I know there's more nuance. I'm going to put the nuance in later. Now, this is extreme, right? I wouldn't normally do it this, this as, as extreme as this when I'm drawing something out. I'm doing this very deliberately. And in the workshop, when we do the workshop, we're going to do it like this. Because I want to try to almost, I think it's not too strong a word to use, to force people out of their normal way of looking at things into looking at things just in terms of light and shadow. So if you look at the glass here, the vase, I've painted very, very little of it, you know, especially if you look at the bit from the top of the water up to the top of the glass vase here. You can't see any of it. You can't see any of it. All there is is a tiny highlight there, which we'll paint in, which will be enough. All you'll need is that tiny highlight to show you where the top of the vase is. Now we do have to do some, when we come to paint the background, we do have to do some modulation, obviously, because it's dark here and it's lighter over there. So we are going to have to do some of that. But let me take out the grid now. So just to tell you, when I started this, before I started the stream today, I coated this panel with a couch, but because I knew I was only going to draw out today and not actually paint, I used mostly solvent and a very small amount of oil. So this is going to be dry tomorrow. I'm taking out the grid lines. So it's really at the moment, it's a random collection of shapes. That's all it is, you know. <laughs> And Ginia says it's already a strong composition, isn't it, though? But that's because it's just shape. You know, it, this is another thing that looking at, at, at your subject in this way does for you, is it helps you sort out the composition right at the start. You know, so if I drew out all this as shapes and it didn't look balanced at this point, then I'd know something was up. I'd know something was wrong. Almost none of the glass has been painted in. There's no division here. There's no division there. We will want a little bit of one because there is a shadow back there. But if you squint right down, it's not obvious. There's no division between these two roses and there's no division between these two here. It's all one shape. This one is just divided into light and shadow shapes. This is two roses there. This is two roses here. And when we come to paint them, we'll do them in that way as well. I wish I had one earlier on. It's an earlier stage that I could show you, but I don't. The only one I can show you is the one that I did last week in a demo, which is this one. This is where we're going to end up, somewhere like this. And if there's time, I'll do some detail, you know. Maybe just on, on some areas of it, just one or two bits of the rows. But <clears throat> this, is, this is an extreme way of doing it. But this is how I think when I'm when I'm laying out a composition. And I think this is one of the biggest differences, especially I noticed on the Alla Prima workshop, when I'm painting Alla Prima. And when, you, when you're painting Alla Prima, you've got to be fairly quick. You know. So, in order to make sure that I, I make as few mistakes as possible and I, and I get an impression of light and shadow as early as possible, this is how I think about it, even though I might be actually painting the things. And it struck me that this is what I need to be teaching, is I need to stop people from painting things and persuade people to paint patches of light and shadow. And then you're much likely to get them more accurate in terms of shape as well. Lisa says, good question. Does this method help keep you looser? Yes, totally. Totally. Because you don't put any detail in until the end. That all comes in at the end, you know. Casey says, go paint plein air if you want to hone your ala prima skill. God, you're not kidding. <laughs> if you want to hone your ala prima skill set. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Hi, Fran, nice to see you. Mike, good to see you. <laughs> Michelle says, even when I know I'm doing it, Right, my brain is going, no. <laughs> it's so true. And there's a, you know the book by Betty Edwards, right brain, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Well, <clears throat> we know now that the, the, the psychologists, um, 
work that that the concept behind that book was based on is actually it's a lot more nuanced let's say um the old idea that all of your 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 left brain is all verbal and reasoning and rational and your right brain is emotion and spatial and all of that and we're all right brained it's actually not true in fact you use both sides of your brain for most things except um language is mostly located on the left side of the brain but the concept is is still holds water i think and this is how we this is why that book was so successful and that approach was so successful because this is how we want to be thinking if we're actually going to be if we're going to get away get our 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 wish to make a good painting out of the way and actually just paint and you get much better um, results if you can do it that way okay so um that was actually pretty quick that was only about 35 minutes tomorrow's will probably be longer because tomorrow i'm going to mix up some colors i'm going to show you the mixing stage as well and i'm going to block in the entire canvas panel and when i do that means i'm also going to have to handle the edges right at the start it's not something you think about later you know and as soon as that's in you will start to see if you squint down enough an impression of light and shadow okay it will start to come trust me it will honest so <laughs> tomorrow i'm not sure what time i'll be doing it maybe a little bit earlier because it's kind of late in the day for me this i've been painting all day oh let me show you what i was doing today actually you might be interested anyone who was following along the last few streams might be interested to see this um i'm in the kind of the finishing stages of the the pot with the pear the stone pot with the pears um i've done quite a bit of stuff on this one now try and get it so there's no shadow on it i'm mostly working on the cloth at the moment that i still want to finish off I'm quite happy with all of this vagueness going off here. And then I've got some stuff I need to share with you about how I did the background, actually. I'm quite chuffed with that. Um, I, I was painting this today and I was thinking, you know what? I have a feeling that possibly for the... I'm trying to get myself out of the way. Possibly for the first time in a painting, I actually got what I wanted. <laughs> I got This came where I wanted it to be. It's not finished yet though, so there's still plenty of time to ruin it. We'll see how it goes. Listen, thank you very much for showing up everybody today. Just a shorty, um, but this is all I needed to get done at this stage was just to paint those shapes. Um, and tomorrow we'll start putting a little bit of color down. Um, I'll try and send out an email um before um before we actually do that let's just see if i can if anybody wants to make sure that they're on the email list so they get email notifications when i'm going live there <clears throat> i think that probably only came out on youtube so i'll stick it in I'll stick it in Facebook as well there. So you can subscribe to the email list there if you want to stay in touch and make sure that you hear about these things as they come up. And also, if you want to find out more about the workshop, um, I'll put a link to the, some info about the workshop. But I mean, we're going to be doing basically what I'm doing today, but it's and, and over this week but it's going to be obviously in more depth and there's going to be exercises and stuff like that involved as well okay um thanks very much for coming along everybody i hope that was interesting and i'll hopefully i'll see you all again tomorrow <laughs>